Hello everybody, this time we have a special episode in our B2B e-commerce integrate talks. So in our regular monthly episodes, uh, we cover one or two main agenda topics based on what's going on in the market called B2B e-commerce integrated and the podcast is available on Spotify. YouTube and Apple. Uh, today we are going to have indeed a special episode, as you said, and it's going to be about maintenance of your e-commerce platform. And we recently published a guide on our website on how to get rid of uh, B2B e-commerce maintenance. And that's what inspired us for this talk today. So why does mainstream e-commerce fail B2B suppliers? Um, why is there so much time spent on uh, maintenance? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, and we have investigated that and we um, we do it all the time and we t talk a lot to our customer base, obviously. And um, yeah, there are there are a couple of reasons. So first of all, we, we notice we see that siloed systems, as we call them. So we have ERP and e-commerce. They do not communicate to each other or they do not communicate fast enough to each other, which means, um, yeah, we no and uh, we have seen customers uh, being very successful it's a necessary in ingredient for having a good b2b experience uh, if especially pricing um, inventory information delivery dates uh, and product information in some extent is uh, is available in real time for your b2b buyers uh, but also your commercial teams um, yeah, otherwise it's uh, it's it's going wrong so just to give it a little bit more tangible example um, so, for example, we have a company uh, in our customer base, they are selling um, bicycle parts or yeah, let's take bicycle tires, for example, and they have they supply that to multiple bike shops around uh, around Europe um, and different regions. Uh, but due to the rapid changing um, nature of supplies change these days, right, uh, the your inventory levels and pricing is fluctuating a lot. So and if you need to maintain that in your in your e-commerce system manually all the time or you have i don't know file imports or or yeah other connections that you need to maintain that is still taking a lot of manual work from um uh, from yeah your or your e-commerce team or sometimes the it teams if the if the company is a bit smaller um and you want to avoid that because uh, it takes time but it's also because it's manual it's it's prone to error which means that yeah if mistakes are out there you will have a um, yeah, compromise of suboptimal experience, uh, which will harm in the end your relationship with your B2B buyer or your commercial teams, and in the end also yeah the transaction uh, volume. So that is that is one that is one sample. The other one is um, if you are having a mainstream e-commerce solution, which there are great other tools in in the market as well, but most of them are still very created from its foundation or start uh, with a B2C or retail focus. Um, which is great because that is also that's how e-commerce I think started and still it's it's a big part of the world of course everybody's using it um, but it's missing then this yeah, B2B specific uh, features that you need to run B2B e-commerce. So uh, what I've heard is that um, while we see a lot of our customers they want to expand they want to create yeah. more stores and that's also an issue with so yeah. mainstream solutions. Your supplier, for example, of uh, industrial cleaning products. We have also a lot of customers in that, you know, chemical mm -hmm. area, I would say, or uh, industry. Then it's really uh, important because maybe local regulations is involved here. It's really important that you know, okay, which products can I sell where and which not. And uh, sometimes it's even going on a one-to-one -one customer level, let's say so. So it's country and region and maybe even customer specific that needs to be uh, needs to be there that is only about regulations that's already quite a, adding quite some complexity same actually goes for farm if you are in pharmacy or in in in, in medical supplies it also happens a lot there's a lot of regulations around that then taking an account that's also available or also an issue in btc but currency language obviously and taxation uh, that's also there one thing there is i think more interesting with b2b is the amount of different regions that you need to support is is at least what we see at our customers sometimes really exploding let's say 20 50 or 100 different um, uh, countries or stores that uh, that needs to be there and if you can take that logic from a system that integrates with the erp where all that logic is already there yeah you will uh, not only have a head uh, a head start but also have the ability to continuously let's say evolve and roll out new stores really quickly and expand your uh, uh, your markets are tr transforming them from physical to digital much faster than, than systems that were not built for that. You touch upon the, the final issue, 
which is a lack of connection to the business logic, which can be very complex, as you explained. We have named the word complex a lot of these times, of course. Yeah, we want to actually make complex B2B simple with, with SANA. But if you lack, let's say, continuous synchronization between your ERP or order management system, or even going further, if you cannot really use that logic, which is already there, yeah, then you run into trouble and can lead to, to maintenance issues. Let's take an example. If you are a company that has um, quite some pricing or pricing scale options for your loyal customers in B2B, that can get complex uh, really fast and complexities then most of the time in the amount of data. In B2C, it's most of the time, okay, you have maybe some loyalty program or you get a discount code. But with B2B, um, yeah, it, it, it's often based on, for example, trade agreements. And then it depends also on the volume you're taking. So a lot of these things the sales teams are playing with to yeah to get these customers in and to, to actually to build these relationships and 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 make that happen if you all take that uh, and you want to move that, that that information from one system to another yeah that is that is a huge task and also a very dangerous task because there will be mistakes along the way often it's happening that if you want to put that in a mainstream e-commerce solution the first thing they will say okay let's simplify it so let's make it really simple and then a lot of time is being there sometimes we also advise that if it's really complex let's say so but most of the time i think almost in 99 percent of the times we can take what is already there and it's it's perfectly functioning because we are doing it the other way around we are taking what is already there we are just making sure that uh that it is uh really quick eh? and that it is performing we see that there are four uh, main issues when it comes to the maintenance of main mainstream sorry mm -hmm. uh b2b e-commerce uh, mainstream e-commerce platform um the four issues are siloed systems yes. that don't communicate to each other or don't communicate fast enough it's b2bc focus when yeah. we've seen that b2b has some specific requirements it's platforms that don't enable your growth internationally yeah. uh, for example and a platform where your business logic is not reflected in um, and that don't have a ERP connection. If you can't measure it, it doesn't exist, right? Yeah. So le let's talk a bit about um, what the leading indicators are that your mainstream e-commerce platform solution isn't really pulling its weight. Or in other words, uh, mm -hmm. how can you uh, make your maintenance issue visible? I've actually um, gathered a couple uh, or uh, a couple of, let's say, key performance indicators or KPIs that you can try to measure eh, in your current situation. First one is of course, and everybody's using total cost of ownership. I think what is often being forgotten is the hidden cost of running a B2B e-commerce store. So you can think of, okay, um, what is actually the maintenance I really need to put into this platform? Eh? Look at, for example, the work the IT team or the e-commerce team is doing you can yeah, you can measure that okay maybe you're measuring the time to tickets to be solved or you just can ask your employees to see okay from your agenda how much time are you spending on it you can already make a quite good estimation there as well as looking at okay how many uh, downtime do you have for example when the systems are not really connected to each other or you need to fix these issues also add that to the cost and see if then the the total business case is still uh, profitable or that it can be optimized. So that is that is one form. Um, a couple of leading indicators that can help there to, um, um, to, to recognize or identify the cost is, for example, uh, the, the ticket volume increase and you're just checking, okay, is uh, the amount of tickets which are related to, to the B2B e-commerce platform. First of all, start measuring that. So if you have a ticketing system, for example, in your IT department or in your support de department, so it can be both. And let's be clear about it, issues can rise in the IT department, but can also be on the customer service or the sales mm -hmm. support. But okay, what is the inventory level of this product is already, I think, a ticket that you should measure because these things can be automated or should in a good platform, B2B e-commerce platform should be available. Then let's look at more letter on the customer side of things. So the net promoter score is always a good thing to do so that you just measure how good is your experience, right? Do an NPS survey. I think we can talk about it more in the later stage. And the fourth one, I think is a very um, important one and one we are following a lot or we are helping our customers with the teams that we have at customer success or the product is the, the web store adoption rate. So how is your yeah, B2B e-commerce 
environment if it's new or existing how it's being adopted or how the adoption is growing so how you calculate it is more most of the time okay how many buyers do you have in total uh, and how many are do you have in a certain time frame um on the from the web store i would say good ratios here is that uh we see companies now already uh, having 50 percent plus so that they are doing more online orders than um than offline it's not actually only i would say about the b2b buyers you can do the same measurements with your internal sales uh people because they are your biggest ambassadors and i would say also your bigger and ena biggest enabler of b2b e-commerce success because if they are not using it then probably your b2b buyers will not use it as well because yeah they are most of the time in contact we've measured it we've measured we saw that uh, our total cost of ownership is not great we have a lot of tickets for IT, for our customer service team, uh, our customers are not really happy about the platform and we don't have a good adoption rate. So we know we have a problem now yes. and we can make it visible. One of the first issues we, we highlighted was uh, data discrepancies because your two systems are not connected. So how can that be solved? Yeah, so uh, of course with, with Sana, we believe that the uh, ERP integrated e-commerce is let's say the silver bullet here. So what is ERP integrated e-commerce? So your, your ERP or your backend systems contain so much valuable information you've gathered over the years and makes your business run, run smoothly already or huh, um, for the year. So it can be product specifications, pricing details, inventory levels, of course, your, all your customer information, maybe even also via CRM. Uh, but uh, there is, this is a huge pile of, uh, of information and logic and everything actually your B2B web store needs to deliver this yeah, perfect uh, buying experience, I would say. Web store software or mainstream e-commerce software wasn't built to have all those complex ERP business logic and, and data in the system. So yeah, what if we could combine these two things and let these both systems do what they can do best, right? So other benefits, eh? of course, yeah, it saves you a lot of time. Uh, eh? You do not have to maintain two systems in one place. That is obvious. But I think, yeah, well, it, it still is so important to understand that the biggest, I think, benefit here is that the, the, the reduction of of, of errors and, uh, and the required maintenance for that to solve these errors. If it is pricing or data errors or if it's... Yeah, let's say that an order has been placed, but the product that was ordered was out of in, out of stock. These things you want to uh, to minimize or eliminate, and that's what we are seeing at our customers happening. So, I mean, ERP is your central tool for your B two B company. Yeah. So, um, how can it contribute actually this ERP integration to having a B two B first approach with your e commerce platform? The ERP is, let's say, the backbone of your organization, right? If you uh, will remove it, you cannot stand anymore. So it's 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 really really important, and yeah, we always say yeah, it's the heart of your let's say B two B first approach. Um, everything what is in there will we bring offline. Of course, you will still need to optimize things for the online channel, right? We uh, we also understand, or we see uh, customers understand that if you have um product descriptions that were maybe more optimized for your internal processes that you need to rewrite them that's obvious but the basics are there that pricing and stock will most of the time not change one of the other issues was about expanding to new markets yeah and uh, i know that we have some customers that we've helped expand with 12 stores to different markets very quickly yeah. can you explain a bit how um well, the integration with the ERP helps them. For these different markets, all the logic, because they do already business there, these most of the time, these logic, these logic and configurations are already there. So taxation rules, uh, but also which products to, uh, uh, are allowed in which region, what prices, what currencies uh, is being sold for, which customers are actually in that region. So with Sana, it's just a matter of a couple of, let's say, um, uh, clicks to roll out another store and say, hey, uh, we are now opening to Spain all the customers from Spain will be redirected to that one and when they log in they get their their language Spanish they get their currency euro they get their taxation rules and so on but there are also larger companies that have many different ERP systems and they also are optimized for that you can say okay um, maybe we need to connect to another instance of SAP or Dynamics, which is located on another part of the world. Already explaining this or talking about this topic, you, you understand the complexity and yeah, if your solution is not 
built for that, you need to customize this or you need to configure this or work with a partner. Yeah, and, and also last issue we, we talked about earlier was mm -hmm. the business log logic not being available in your e-commerce store. Yeah. But now it is possible with this integration and it allows for very fast calculations of price, for example. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and that is also the main issue mm -hmm. with this logic because it's not only about triggering that logic. Some other mainstream e-commerce solutions sometimes also try to do it to have that. But it's about the performance. We see a lot of customers before they jumping on uh, jump on Sana or that they moved that they have already some tried sometime. Like they understand that they need real time calculation, for example, of a shopping cart or or inventory or price. Uh, but the problem is if that yeah if you're just triggering and then we talk a little bit more more technical if you're triggering the the default out of the box APIs or connect connectivity possibilities or integration possibilities of these ERPs, they are not optimized for the super fast experience that you want. Thanks, Arno. So I'd say if you are experiencing maintenance issues of your mainstream B two B e commerce platforms, we have the silver bullet, that's ERP integrated e commerce. So maybe um, to summarize a bit and uh, paint a bit the picture of a nice future with integrated e-commerce. Can you list it once again what the benefits are of having a yeah, so, integrated e-commerce? Yeah. yeah, so switching hey, from mainstream to ERP integrated solution is hey, with, with mainstream e-commerce you will have, you will spend time uh, for, for, yeah, let's say manual order entry uh, sometimes even on, on, on the web store and, and in the ERP. Yeah? If something goes wrong, you need to fix that. Downtime that you can experience on your mainstream B2B e-commerce solution has a file not imported or maybe the store is still running, but if it, I would say if it's running with the wrong data, it's, it's also partly down. Then mainstream e-commerce solution, there is a lack of B2B first features or that's not built for B2B. And that can lead to, let's say, yeah, unhappy experiences or also issues, but in general can also cause a lot of customization that you need to add to that platform to get on some level. Yeah, order errors caused by data issues. We mentioned it already, but we see customers and we have customer cases where they literally go from hundreds or thousands order errors per month that they need to fix to zero or close to zero. And that is also the last point is that time and eh, the IT teams or the commercial teams, the support teams, they are not really busy with all those maintenance tasks or recurring tasks of a malfunctioning web store. Now with ERP integrated e-commerce, we see com companies be very successful and free up time in IT departments, in the commercial teams so that they, um, yeah, that they can work on more yeah, high impact, maybe better, uh, nicer projects than working on this uh, maintenance time. Yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, did you like this episode? Well, if yes or no, let us know by commenting on YouTube. The channel is uh, Sana Commerce. And uh, you can also leave ratings on our podcast channels or reach out to us on LinkedIn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.